Hey everyone, it's Emily Fox. Today's video is going to be a booktube maybe do it situation. I have seen Fourth Wing going around. I have been asked so many times in the comment section to read this book and review it. And since I got it, this is where <laughs> everyone uh, came out to tell me I was going to hate this. So now I'm nervous, but I'm going to go into it with really low expectations and hope that I will be enjoying it. I thought this was an adult fantasy, but turns out maybe not. <laughs> But I've heard that it has kind of a magical school and dragons, which, you know what, I will be focusing on that. I'm expecting to cringe with the romance because, again, I have since realized that the author usually writes uh, spicy romance, which that's totally fine. I just get secondhand embarrassment really quickly. So I am going through a terrible book hangover. I literally just finished. It's right here. This masterpiece. Um, and my heart is so, so broken that I wouldn't be able to read anything. So I think I might as well just read something fun. And no matter what happens, you know, I think if I go into it with low expectations, it should be okay. I feel like sometimes with the hype online, people start loving something and then there's a second wave of people just starting bashing it. And I don't mean that in a mean way because I've been in both waves, sometimes both at the same time. Um, so like no judgment, uh, it's just, you know, it's online, that's what happens. So I'm trying to just, I did not watch or read uh, any reviews. So I have absolutely no idea except what you guys told me and I try not to, you know, <laughs> read your messages. Okay, my expectations. Um, I should have said that first. Now that everyone has said that it's probably not adult, I'm guessing it's more YA. So the romance is gonna be cringe. I'm assuming that we're gonna be introduced by, with the love interest in the first chapter. Uh, there's gonna be like way too many descriptions about his eyes. It's always like it, you know, they always have crazy eyes. Her too, I should have mentioned that first. Uh, her, she will have, uh, she's gonna be petite. She's gonna be, um, I don't even know what the story's about. I'm guessing because, you know, basically thrown up glass. Um, she's gonna be oh so tiny, uh, but she's gonna kick ass eventually. Um, yeah, overly a description of her eyes too. They usually have weird eye colors or air colors. And like I said, him, eye colors, and probably a scent. Um, I feel like the only other YA romance I've read recently, fantasy romance, uh, he was being described multiple times throughout the book as smelling like spring sunshine. It like stuck in my brain. So that's my expectations. But I've heard the dragons are cool, which is, again, I'm still trying to find a book that has like the best dragons. Maybe? Maybe. Emily from the future here. I just wanted to give you a little bit of a plot summary because I'm doing a poor job doing that throughout the vlog. I'm just live reacting, right? So uh, in this world, they are under attack from the outside world and the only thing keeping them safe is the riders and uh, their dragons, the magic. And there's been a rebellion a couple of years ago and the rebels were executed by the mother of the main character, Violet. She was raised her whole life to become a scribe like her father, unfortunately passed away recently, and her mother decides that, no, you're gonna do like your older siblings and you're gonna go also to become a writer. So she goes there completely unprepared and she will also be surrounded by the children of the rebels because as punishment, they are sent there to train too because most people just don't make it. So. She's just not prepared for any of the things that are going to happen and yeah, that's all you need to know. I am a genius or more like these books are incredibly <laughs> predictable. Um, so page two and three, she's already too weak to handle her rucksack. So she's weak. Okay, that was to be expected. Um, I'm not too sure what's going on exactly yet. Uh, I will come back to that in a second. But then you get page three. Pale skin, pale eyes, pale hair. Called it. Called it. Um, I don't know how special that is, but they're making it sound like it's it's bad because they're saying how it's like that fever stole all your coloring along with your strength. I feel like I'm going into this book a little too petty, but it is to be expected. I'm hoping that eventually I'll just get into the story, which, you know, like almost against your will. That's how I like the readable... I don't like to say guilty pleasure, but I'm hoping. Ugh, am I too hopeful? Low expectations, but I called it. So am I still being petty? Yep, yep. Um, there's There was another mention of her being weak, uh, but her eyes. <laughs> My eyes are just as indecisive. A light easel of varying blues and embers that never seem to favor either actual color. <laughs> Listen, there's nothing wrong with just having 
eye color that are <laughs> like they're always like this always like this and it's just funny so i'm officially putting this in the y category at the moment so we'll see that we'll see I do appreciate though that she's a bookish person. I feel like when you're reading books, that is definitely one thing that I like. And that or like whenever it's set in a bookstore, like, yeah, of course I'm gonna read that. I was starting to wonder. I was starting to wonder. It's still chapter one, uh, page 18. I think this is gonna be the love interest because we had a description of his eyes. I mean, just a long description of his muscle and all that stuff. And then you get, and his eyes, <laughs> his eyes are the shade of gold flakes. Onyx. Of course. I mean, it's a fantasy book. Anything goes. But of course. Okay. <laughs> He's the most exquisite man I've ever seen. Um, that's gonna be. That's gonna be a lot of that. And of course, he's like the enemy. So we have our first male protagonist or love interest. So hate to love, which to be honest, in a fantasy book, does work for me. Um, in contemporaries, I feel like I'm more picky. I feel like they always end up doing something that I can't forgive. Not always, but whenever they're enemies to lovers, it's it's a fine line. I feel like Emily Henry, sometimes sometimes she does it well. Uh, but otherwise, I've been struggling with that. But I'm okay. I'm okay. So I finished the first chapter. And uh, so far, the writing is not great. Okay. I Again, I expected it. Uh, but I'm going to continue. The romance is definitely going to be cringy. Just by the way she described that. Zayden. Um, I, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> I'll see you later. Although I forgot to mention, her mom just really doesn't give a sh about her. That's, that is weird. Is there more to that? Are we gonna get answers in book one? I don't know how many books are going to be in this series. I know book two is coming out any day now. I'll put it on the screen. Um, but the first step just to get into the school is intense. Um, we got boy number two um, in chapter two. So pretty early too. Easy going smile, all her fantasies, blah, blah, blah. Cute and gorgeous, whatever. Uh, that's her friend. I think they grew up together. So I hate those. I I'm gonna be honest. Um, I, don't, I don't hate friends to lovers, but I feel like whenever there's a love triangle, the friend always comes off as like I was friend zone blah 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 and like they're always the a-hole in the story and like you end up rooting for the actual a-hole who turns out to be perfect for her uh which again I'm okay with that version but not the friend I feel like he's just there just to complicate things and like he's always being a poo-poo head so we'll see uh he hasn't done anything we're literally just being introduced but I'm like already being petty so hi Charlie which one are you well, he is all black and he has kind of amber eyes. Are you Zayden or Dane? Was it Dane? I think it was Dane. We're literally just after. Um, he takes my chin between his thumb and forefinger, turning my face left and right for inspection. That's your friend. That's... He definitely, he definitely is not your friend. Um, okay. Um, but it's making it look like they're both kind of into each other. I'm wondering why nothing happened then, but... I still don't like him <laughs> for whatever reason because he's not Zayden, of course. Okay, so we're much later, uh, page 80. I think I found one of the plot holes. I feel like I had heard people say that. And to be honest, I don't feel like I noticed them very well uh, unless they're like right in your face. And I mean, if someone mentions it, I'll be like, yeah, fair enough. Um, but this seems really, really far-fetched. Um, basically, the groups of the children of the people that rebel were marked and she is out and about in the middle of the night climbing a tree for ingredients to I'm assuming poisoning people that she will have to fight to try and win because again she's a weakling um and just because uh these children that are not allowed to meet together in a group of more than three all end up right under that tree having a meeting of some sort how convenient, how convenient. Um, we'll see what happens there because it doesn't seem like they've said anything, uh, but of course Zayden found her. Uh, so <laughs> we'll see how that goes, but like very glaringly obvious of a 
plot hole or like just something that is weirdly convenient. Almost forgot to say. Um, the cringe is starting. They're flirting. Which like for someone that hates her, that did not take long. Um, but like her description, like her mental narration, I hate how beautiful he is. <laughs> how lethal his abilities make him as he strides toward like it's making me want to throw the book very far, very far away. But I want to know the dragons. I, I'm still, you know, waiting to get a good glimpse of that because I've heard that part is really good. So I'm going to push through, but there's only so many. He's so hot. Uh, I can take. So, but now there's also Jack that has been trying to kill her forever. And now like she's, she keeps basically antagonizing him. Which, like, it's not gonna end well. Like, one of them has to die. And, like, there's still this much left. So, like, he's gonna have to die, not her. But she definitely has a lot to say for someone that is apparently so, so weak. Again, we're reminded every two seconds. So, we'll see. She's been very lucky or, like, ingenious so far. But you cannot convince me that this man hates her. They're flirting. They're definitely flirting. It's cringy, but they're flirting. She also mentioned again is Onyx cold flicked eyes. This is getting very cringy. I'm gonna pause. I, I need a break from this because this is too much. But I'm still reading. So dragons, please. Hello. Um, things are finally good. Uh, I think my problem is that while things are much better, <laughs> they're also cringier. Like the author can help herself. She has to make those situations a little too but I've read like two or three more chapters. Um, I don't remember how far was I. Um, but basically they were finally presented or they were, yeah, they were presented to the dragons, which I feel like I didn't explain at all what the book was about, but I didn't know, okay? Um, so she went to this magical school where she's learning to fight and then they will be presented to dragons if they survive, <laughs> apparently everyone is dying. Um, and the dragons will like look at them and decide which ones will be going in their backs because it gives them like a mental connection and uh, it gives them magical powers. So the dragons have to have a human. So, but things got a lot more intense. Um, I will include spoilers. Okay, if you wanna know, I feel like this is where the spoilers begin. So when they're presented to dragons, they have to be talking to each other. So the dragons kind of get more of an idea of who is who and like the vibes, I guess. And people get, I wasn't expecting the annoying people to get um, burnt, basically. So that was cool. Um, <laughs> and then right after, they, there's the threshing where basically they have to go again in front of dragons and go figure out the ones that they had a connection with, if they do. And it's also when they are finally allowed to kill each other if they want to kind of thing. Uh, they're not really supposed to, but they still do it all the time. I was kind of shocked that they hadn't really tried that hard to kill her beforehand if they, you know, all seem to hate her. Um, but apparently she stands out with her light hair, of course. So yeah, the thing is, I'm okay with the people going after her trying to kill her. It seems like Zayden has made, has made it very clear that he has a thing for her now because he wasn't supposed to intervene and he kind of almost did. And this is the cringy part. One of the dragons turn out to be this tiny, tiny golden little dragons. And you're like, oh my god, of course she's gonna have those stupid little dragons. Because <laughs> she's a tiny, tiny little girl. Uh, and you know, light hair. Blah, blah. So, um, turns out, again, spoiler, not only does she get to have this tiny, tiny dragon that the other guys were trying to go kill and then, you know, attack her, blah, blah, whatever. <laughs> she also is the one that got with the big, big dragon that everyone wanted, the super powerful one. So she has two dragons, which is unheard of. So yeah, that's, you definitely get the whole like special, special snowflake vibes, but the dragons do seem cool. So I'm kind of torn here because things are getting much better and much worse at the same time. It's very cliche. There it is, the writing is not great, but it's incredibly readable, which like I mentioned in the intro, that's exactly what I need after reading uh, Jade Legacy. I couldn't imagine myself reading anything right now if not something like this. So for that reason, I can't be mad. Um, I'm still reading. It's entertaining, but sometimes in a bad way, sometimes in a good way. So 
it is what it is. Again, I'm just gonna keep going with an open mind and hope for the best. Actually, I put a few post-it. I don't know if I have anything. No, I think it's mostly just the cringiness. Like the little dragon, turns out she has no claws. She can't shoot fire and <laughs> like a useless little dragon, basically. Uh, but I'm sure she's gonna be special special because she's golden, okay? So it, she has to have something. <laughs> Honestly, as soon as they mentioned the golden dragon, I'm like, of course she's gonna have it. But of course she also has to be stronger than everyone ever. So she has two dragons, including the giant one. So that's gonna end badly. <laughs> oh my God, the cringy. Oh, oh, 185. They're mated pair. Her dragon and Zayden dragons are mated. So I'm assuming that also means that they're gonna be. I mean, as if it wasn't obvious from the first chapter that they were going to end up together. Um, but of course they had to be a mated pair. I don't know exactly what that means yet, but I should have called that. Cause I feel like it's such a team. I haven't read that many romance to be honest. So again, I'm being a bit petty here, but I feel like the whole mated and like you basically have no choice is a big thing in romance and like again i'm not necessarily judging it because the whole like oh no there's only one bed kind of thing absolutely works that's fine um but the maiden <laughs> it's not them though it's a dragon so it's okay um i'm still curious what her magic is going to be because him it's like shadows and um some of the magic does seem interesting but we'll see what she gets i'm assuming it's gonna be very special um you know and like, of course, every time they like, they fight constantly because um, the hormones, of course. But she's always like, oh, it's so inconvenient. But like, she's flirting. So like, whatever. The only thing is that, again, I don't think I mentioned it, but her mother is responsible for his father's death. But also, I think his father killed her brother. I don't think I mentioned that part. So like, she should also be pissed, but she's not. Um, literally right after, Dane proved my point. I, I was not getting good vibes, okay? You can't convince me the best friend for- I never- in fantasy, it never- it never works out. Uh, but Dane basically admits that he would have let her if it meant that he had to break the rules to save her. So, Team Zayden. That's it. Team Zayden. Uh, I knew F. Dane, he's a poo, poo head, already established, so- I just need a t-shirt, Team Zeta now. So, he's annoying, but Dane is a boo boo head. The whole mated thing, yeah, apparently, uh, the dragons are very close to the writers. They create this bond, so if she dies, sometimes the dragon will also die. But since he's mated, it means it could kill her, like, his mate, and her, since she is linked to Zeta, he could also die. So now he's forced to protect. To be fair, he was protecting her before this whole shit. Okay, you cannot convince me that he wasn't, again, instantly madly in love for whatever magical reason. Uh, there's always a magical reason. Maybe not. But now they, they have no choice. So <laughs> why is it always so freaking cringy? I will say, though, that it do does add to the intrigue the fact that since the bond is fresh, people try to kill each other so they can have a chance to bond with the dragons because there were not enough dragons for everyone. So they want to increase their chances. This is this is intense. Um, I, again, I'm enjoying the magical school vibes. Yeah, there's nothing else. <laughs> That's my girl. That's my girl. Uh, she did exchange a little kiss uh, with Dane and meh, 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 disappointed. There's no, there's no chemistry. Thank God, because he's a poo-poo head. Like, I, I thought that was obvious. He wouldn't have saved you? you? The guy that wanted you dead would have saved you. But your best friend wouldn't? Z See, I, I need the team Zayden, but also Dane is a poo-poo head on a t-shirt because why could you ha Ew. Ew. Okay, let me actually show you my bed right now. The beasts. I know. Where's the third one? She looks very comfy. And now the third one just arrived too. Hi, Charlie. Should I say Zayden? No, but it's so too cringy. I mean, people called her 
cats or pets people's name oh my god let me show you <laughs> so tiny one medium one giant one you're so big you're so big but he has a tiniest little paws oh, that's a little, <laughs> the little paws they're literally the same size okay and like he has giant paws and she has humongous paws okay focusing um listen this is gonna be my second big complaint about plot holes or possible plot holes again this, this is coming from someone that doesn't notice them so this is like glaringly obvious turns out the teeny tiny golden special special uh dragon did i say golden yes um she can stop time listen listen this is gonna make it so dumb because like she can stop time come on um yeah i listen <laughs> i don't even know what to say because this is this is a poor choice does it is isn't it very convenient yes a little too much that's their problem speaking of convenient um still didn't get much news about the other meeting he told her not to tell or she said she wasn't going to and she hasn't but we're like halfway through the book and that has not come up again but yeah she can stop time uh they were trying to kill her finally um but in her sleep which is against the rule and of course satan very very mad about it um but yeah the teeny tiny dragon stop time so <sighs> satan is being a little a little much never lied to me <laughs> <laughs> the cringe is definitely present um I think at least it's making little teeny tiny dragon very tired to use magic. But like, this is going to just make it so silly. I was getting into it. Because the magic is cool. The dragons are cool. People were right. And I was totally willing to look past the, no the annoying cliches and the cringy romance. But... I'm still reading though, so I can complain as much as I want. It's readable. Zayden is apparently so fucking hot. Literally, this is just her staring at him for pages. Um, we get it. But um, I do want to mention what I'm assuming is going to be another very convenient thing. I don't know yet, but Jack. I mentioned Jack, right? He, he wants to kill her. Literally first chapter she puts a blade to his balls um i can say that right <laughs> i never know with youtube um I, I don't think i mentioned that scene i was too overwhelmed with the rest you know the love interest in the first chapter but also the enemy that is their very common team in ya books because i'm labeling this way i don't care um there hasn't been any sexy scenes yet so can you have spicy scenes I guess it depends on spicy. Maybe this is new adult. Um, but Jack, uh, she he hasn't really done that much. I mean, he hasn't done that much directly to her yet. But randomly at the gym, as she was sal sal salivating, salivating, looking at Zayden, um, half naked. Um, someone offers Jack as they're like conversing aggressively. Uh, a slice of orange at the gym on the mats anyway um and jack shop sh shop <laughs> the french see when i get emotional the french comes out it is what it is right i feel like when you're fighting your first language comes out when you're counting sometimes the first language comes out and now so emotional um <laughs> because jack shoves his hand at, away at the wrist get that noxious thing away from me do you want me to end up in the infirmary oh this is so dumb it's so unaware it's not subtle he must be allergic probably deadly whatever and since she has been poisoning her enemies whenever it's time to fight so she doesn't get that's you know, this is so weak. This is so weak. I, this is why I want to label it why, because I feel like the, those are the kind of like really obvious things that are put in there that maybe you don't notice as much when you're younger, but like it's just too obvious. 
and out of nowhere they're at the gym like if they were at the cafeteria or something maybe but like yeah and then more cringe with what's his face Zayden so yeah um I'm gonna go to bed I think that orange slice just did it for me um and frankly I can't read more about Satan turns his unfathomable eyes towards me. Like, no, no. I'm a liar, but I, I wish I hadn't. I told myself I was going to finish the chapter, and I hate myself for not doing that. Because... <laughs> You're not ready for this. Are you ready? Sit down. Focus. The mated dragons are mating. <laughs> so she is now uh very awake um and she of course finds <laughs> i'm not reading this shit what is wrong with you it's 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 going Pages upon pages of her just. I don't know what's going to happen with them, but I'll figure it out tomorrow because I don't want nightmares. I am reading that scene now in the morning and I should have read it at night. It is so much cringier in the morning, but they kissed. So finally. Okay. I haven't updated you in literally forever. It feels like, um, yeah, I have about 50 pages left, so I'll keep my last thoughts for that, but so much has happened. A lot of spicy scenes. Actually, let's go in order. I should have, you know. Dane being a poo-poo head, of course. Uh, the oranges came back really quickly. I knew it was going to come back. The plot, the plot hole was too obvious there. It's not a plot hole, but more just way too convenient for no reason. Um, so, you know, good for her. Yay. She poisoned someone with something he was allergic to. Okay. So their special, spe special, special, special connection. They can even communicate in each other's head. Whatever the term is in English. This book is making me speak French. So, take that as, as you wish. Dane being a poo-poo head. Leave for me. Um... <laughs> This is, this is very just cringy again. Okay, there you go. Uh, she, her magic power. I was so freaking curious. Like so many people were starting to show their magic and that sounded cool. And then apparently some people can't stay alive with certain magical powers. Interesting. I'm curious about the history because she was a scribe, right? So she used to read a lot about the history, but like, I feel like we didn't get much. It seems to be inkling at like a lot has happened. I mean. A whole generation of people well a hundred and something people their parents were murdered so like things things are not you know explained in that portion but she can use lightning which that kind of gave me vibes of shadow and bones because the dark darkness the shadows and then the lightning and like you know kind of um a little bit but okay i didn't know what to expect magical power wise apparently it's strong so we'll take it uh and now that the cringy sex scenes is happening. I laughed literally out loud at 377 because in the middle of things getting hotter, um, where they would basically ask, oh, do you have a condom? Fantasy book though. And it, <laughs> I take the fertility suppressant. <laughs> Listen, safe sex, all for it. But um, that is just hilarious that the author was like, oh shit. <laughs> gotta do something here so I literally laugh when I got there because of course of course he would uh yeah the sex scene whatever um I've read worse I've read some Murakami the only thing is well first off her magical powers obviously she, she's basically burning down the forest because storms um but <laughs> this doo-doo hat is like oh don't fall for me like, they're clearly been flirting this whole time, but whatever. But then she wakes up and he left a handful of spring violets for her. Dude, one or the other. One or the other. This is mixed signals. Like, if this was real life, 
and you were my friend telling me, yeah, he told me not to fall for me, right there, red flag. But he also left me a handful of flowers that are my name. He's a doo-doo head. Douche, douche. Oh, he has been hurt in Don't give a shit. In a book, we'll let it go. Uh, it's a fantasy book. If it was a contemporary, it would be a no, but whatever. Um, <laughs> at least she called him out. I will give her that. She does call them out. Um, she's very weak, 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 but she's at least stands up for what she believes in. So she's not excessively annoying because of that, but at least she's getting a little stronger because... And at least again, she's calling him out for, oh, let's not fall for each other when like, you're clearly already, like, whatever. Oh, the cringiness of like, oh, I'm just is. Okay, that's again, super common in romance, whatever. Uh, what else was there? Yeah, when he's like, oh, I fell in love for you the second I saw you. Okay, okay, sure. Oh, we got the eyes back. Um, I've memorized every gold fleck in those onyx. <laughs> we needed the reminder, okay? Oh, also, they were saying she had light eyes and light hair and light skin, whatever. But we finally get more of the explanation. Like she, like her dragon has been calling her the silver one, whatever. And her mom was telling her she needed to shave her head, whatever. But apparently her hair is brown to silver. Because she's special. So hopefully we'll get an explanation for that too. But so far, no. More spicy scenes. I will admit though, she got five in this one. So like, go you. Um, at least, you know, it's hard to really be mad at Zayden since he's actually providing her with some O's. Dane wouldn't, okay? <laughs> he's annoying. He wouldn't. So I realized that I never mentioned the book. Basically, her book, or her dad, who passed away, um, was always reading her out of a book that turns out she couldn't even find at the, the archives where she should have been with the scribes. So it's like a book that, you know, doesn't exist or like... I guess that goes back to the whole rebellion thing. So now she finds out that basically those were not fables, but they were actually true. And you know, everybody lied to her, blah, blah. So her father knew and he's married to someone high up in the army. Is that why the mother is not grieving? I'm assuming we're gonna get more answer for that. Maybe not in book one because it's almost done. Um, but the whole like, oh, you betrayed me, Zayden. It was obvious from the beginning that he was part of the people rebelling, that they were going to, they were not supposed to, blah, blah, blah. But like the meeting, I, I feel like I haven't talked about it in a while, but they haven't talked about it in a while. The author pretended it never happened. And it comes out that, yeah, he did betray everyone. Charlie, he lied to her, okay. But what I find dumb is her reaction. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, okay, she's been betrayed, yes. But it was kind of obvious, okay, that he was never on the side of everybody else. But they were forced to go to that school. I've explained nothing of the plot. You will just have to live with it. Um, but <laughs> what's important is the fact that she's like, I, I loved you. I don't love you anymore. You betrayed me. But Bish, you've chosen your side a long time ago. You cannot convince me you're not on his side. You're maiden now. Um, I, they're dragons, whatever. Same thing at this point, okay? Um, but yeah, she's all being dramatic that like, oh, you betrayed me, blah, blah. When really, it's Dane who did, because his power, didn't mention it, is to like view people's memory, but he has to touch your face, whatever. And at one point, when the people were trying to kill her and the special dragon stopped time, Dane didn't believe her that like one of the leaders, whatever, uh, was responsible. And he tried to get her memory without her consent. Which again, Dane is a poo poo head. I need that shirt. Before she left to go on that mission with Zayden, uh, and other people that are all children of the rebellious people. He touched her face and she's like, no, he always touched me like that. First off, weird. Uh, second of all, wasn't that obvious that it was going to happen? And of course, Dane is a poo poo head, so he's going to betray you. So it's not Zayden that betrayed you, really. It's Dane. So clearly, I will just switch the story as much as possible to complain about Dane. So it's not even really a Zayden thing. It's definitely a Dane sucks. So basically now they're gonna go on a suicide mission. <laughs> but you know, gotta save the people that can't be saved. Uh, so yeah, we'll see. Um, right now, I feel, okay, I'm not done with it, but I'm gonna review it because I'm just gonna read 50 pages and go to bed tonight. <laughs> and I don't wanna film tomorrow. I feel, again, based on the fact that I have 50 pages left, that people that are complaining about this book have no business doing so if they have ever liked a Sarah J Maas book. Because the same complaints that I have 
about this, I've had them with Throne of Glass or Court of Thorns and Roses. So I get why it's popular because again, really similar vibes. And her books, as much as people want to complain about them, they're readable. I didn't like most of them, but they're really popular. And I see no difference with this one. If anything, I think this is better because again, the dragon and the magic is so much more interesting. So yeah, my opinion so far is that incredibly cringy, yes. Um, the romance of <laughs> the characters, eh. So many like convenient things happening. But the dragons and magic, okay? I, yeah, I'll, I'll give you my final thoughts once I'm done. But right now, I would say that this is worse than I thought it was going to be, kind of a bit, but the, you know, the writing and romance. But at the same time, really not as bad as I thought it was going to be. My expectations were so low because you terrified me, but it's not that bad. At least the content so far is somewhat interesting. I do get the vibes that book two is going to be, you know how series are, you know, the, the second book is always the weakest kind of, um, I do get the vibes that this is going to be a make it or break it story wise, because right now it's interesting enough to sustain my interest, but in book two, she might not have a solid enough story to keep this alive. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. I expected worse. That's my review so far. <laughs> 50 pages to go though. I, I might change my mind. Okay, so let me review the last 50 pages before we talk about the the book in general. Uh, I mean, at this point, it's obvious spoilers, right? So the fact that the general is power, I don't think I've ever mentioned it. He can see the outcome of a battle, um, but apparently the reason he didn't want the, the kids of rebels to be more than in a group of three it's because he can't see what's going on when there are more than three which again incredibly convenient but whatever um i'm really sad that uh liam died i really liked him he seemed cool much better friend than what's his face um so that was really sucky um the whole fact that she was poison and it's mentioned really not subtly that there might be consequences later which i'm assuming that's gonna happen in book two uh we get the fact that she's still oh you get the last chapter through the eyes of zayden which the cringe the cringe however um the apology at the end written by a woman um that's all I'm going to say. And now uh, the tiny golden special special dragon, she is now full size magically, but lost the power of the time stopping. Again, how convenient. Um, to be honest, there was a lot more explanation throughout the book that I just did not give you because I didn't want this to last forever. But you can read it if you want to. So yeah, that's kind of where we're at. And then the last sentence basically of the book it's revealed that her brother is actually not dead and he is part of the revolution so that's you know oh i forgot to mention also that uh she's still very much angry at zayden which to be fair i was i know the last clip i was being like oh about her but she believes him she just doesn't trust him which fair enough absolutely fair so yeah He's saying, oh, I'm going to do everything to win you back, which, again. <laughs> so, my thoughts. Frankly, I don't think it was as bad as people are saying, says a girl that hasn't actually read any reviews. But I feel like the vibes that I've been getting is that, like I was mentioning in the intro, you have this wave of people loving something and then the second wave of people bashing it. And that's just how it is, frankly, with the hype on the internet. Is it going to make it to my best books of the year? No, <laughs> no, really not. Is it going to make it to my worst of the year though? Also no. Did I just read awful books or like, I feel like sometimes it's just easy to start bashing a book, but like I've read some really awful ones on here. And frankly, I don't even know why I'm defending this book quite frankly, but I think it's just because I'm really tired of female authors being bashed and like held to higher, much higher standards than like male authors. Because you look at like the list of like best fantasy books to read, uh, first off, they're pretty much all male authors. And when you actually read them, a lot of them are incredibly mediocre. 
Like if you gave five star to like Jim Butcher or like Brent Weeks, don't you dare talk trash about this book. <laughs> Just don't. <laughs> I do think that this is going to be loved by people like that liked Throne of Glass, like I mentioned. Um, I don't know all the, the names, but the one with the eye in front of cover. A lot of these kind of like YA-ish, new adult um, fantasy, dystopian, whatever. You get that whole like... I don't know why it's giving me vibes of like these kind of dystopians. Probably because revolution, but it's definitely fantasy. Um, I think rating wise, I'm going to round it up two or three. It was not that bad. It was not that bad. Um, am I like dying to continue? Not really. Am I opposed to it? No. I mean, if the reviews are really good about book two, I would be intrigued enough to pick it up with the user hysterics that like the story is good enough to come to like support it. Because again, the dragons are cool. Were there a lot of things that were incredibly convenient? Absolutely. Was the writing good? No. Was the romance up my alley? No. Um, but it wasn't that bad. It was not that bad. I've done it. I survived. I read it really quickly. It's super readable. So it is what it is. Book two made me do it. And it's not the worst one you've made me read. So 